All right, so this is a um, Coyote Swap Bronco, or, or what begins of it. It's a 1976 Bronco chassis with a Gen 1 Coyote and a 6R80 uh, pickup combo here. And then um, an advanced adapters uh, adapter to get to a Dana 20. And a Dana 20 would have been a factory um, trans uh, transfer case option in this era Bronco. On this era of Bronco, uh, there are two versions of the Dana 20. The first uh, version was the T-Shift Dana 20, and it has a um, shift, shifter arm setup right here, shift rod setup that has like a slot and a hole, and it doesn't have these little flags on it. And then starting in like right around year 1973, something like that, until the end of the tiny Broncos, the early Broncos, um, they had this J style shift, which would have had these little flags um, welded on to the side of the shift rods. So when you're restoring a Bronco, kind of a cool feature would be to have a twin stick um, shifter for the transfer case. And so that basically engages independently the front axle into either high or low and the rear axle to either high or low and so um, basically each one of these this one controls your output shaft going backwards and this one controls your output shaft going forwards so they make a um, twin stick for both the J shift and the T shift but when you have a coyote swap and you have this Dana 20 adapter they only make a twin stick shifter for the T style shifter, T style shift. So um, basically what we're at here is there's a, there's a couple of options you could do. Um, we already took this apart, um, resealed it, made sure everything wasn't leaking, kind of got it pretty much ready to go. So we thought, then I went to go buy the shifter and um, realized that it was basically the wrong type of transfer case. If you have this J style, when you're when you have this all taken apart, you can replace these rails with the T style rails, and then everything's good. You just buy a T style coyote swap shifter. Everybody's good. But in this instance, we didn't do that. Didn't know about it. Here we are. It's all closed up, and everything's everything's kind of as it was. So I reached out to John B. I'm not going to butcher his last name, um, but I'll put his his company up on here. And um, anyway, super nice guy, kind of asked him like, hey, what, what are the options? He said, yeah, you can buy rails, these pieces, but you're gonna have to take this off, take it apart, do the whole thing. And so I asked if it can be modified, if, these, if this could be modified to basically make it like a T style. And so that's what I'm gonna do today. Um, hopefully it's gonna all work out. Um, if nothing else, then we're gonna have to pull this whole transfer case off anyway. So, um, Basically, it involves cutting the flags off and drilling holes and doing this whole thing. So we bought some parts and uh, they're over here on the table. We'll check them out. All right, so here's kind of the main main pieces we have here. Obviously the shifter. Um, and then here are the little links that go between these little pickup points right here and the shift rods. And then this must be the knobs, I bet. Yep, here are the no knobs. There's his name <laughs> so and his company, so I don't get that all messed up. And then here is the um, shifter boot, twin stick. So there's two boots in there. So here is the actual shifter, you know, assembly. And so you can see how it kind of mounts over the top like that. And so we gotta take these two bolts out. They're kind of a goofy uh, star type of a bit. Uh, e something like e reverse Torx type setup. So we're gonna try and get it off of there. There it goes. <laughs> okay, so John included this little uh, sticker, which is kind of interesting, kind of nice, handy for what we're doing here. Um, we're gonna have um, actual knobs with this on it. Um, so, but but anyway, just for while we're working here. So kind of if you would imagine here, um, according to that shift pattern. Um, both forward would be front, um, basically four low because they're both in low gear. And then you could have neutral, you know, of course. And then you could have um, both in high, which would be like four wheel drive high, four high. That'd be both of them tipped back like this. And so kind of as you'd be cruising down the highway, 
most of the time you'd have rear in high rear wheel drive and the middle in neutral or excuse me the front in neutral and that would be that setup so anyway we were just kind of looking at how this would all work with these arms how this is going to push and pull and so what i did was i shoved the um rails all the way back into the the shifter because what i don't want to do is attach those little hind joints those little links right here or maybe like right here and then have it try to push up and bottom up against this housing so you want to have the rails um, all the way tucked tucked in of course they can pull out but you want them tucked in um, before you start modifying these rails okay so these are the nice little links that are included in the kit and um, basically the side with the ball end like this goes actually on the shifter so we're going to mount them up um, onto the shifter and so the side with the meat kind of the the ball ball side goes on the outside away from the transmission on all these setups so that's the way we're going to do it we're going to put these on there kind of loose uh, loose so that we can see where this actual end the the blank end ends up on the actual shift rail all right so uh, we got this the shifter kind of loosely mounted here we got our heim joints on we tightened right here and right here so we're really nicely locked down to the actual shifter and so one minor thing is as you turn this you can see we're actually getting a little drag on the body of the transmission right here so this this whole truck was in a in a wreck who knows what the story is there so what we're just going to do is we're just going to nip off uh, like a thread or two off of the back of here with a grinder so that we have you know good proper clearance between the shifter and the actual uh, transmission All right, so we got the, the flap wheel and die grinder out and just kind of took the slightest little nick off of there. There was kind of a mismatch where this cast um, adapter and the actual bell housing weren't right meeting up super great. So now you can see when this comes through, swinging through here, we don't actually touch and everything's good. Okay, so the next thing, um, I'm back to referring to my little uh, diagram here, but um, basically I have these rails pushed all the way in. I was messing with it off camera. Just take a screwdriver and just kind of get these pushed in all the way. And you'll know you're in all the way because um, you can feel neutral. Of course, these are actually in neutral and they spin. But um, with the, the truck itself in neutral, I can sit here and I can spin this and you notice the other one's moving. And so if I click, click it forward one, that would go to neutral. And if I click it forward two, that would be rear low. So the reason I did this is I wanted to mark um, how far these can go in into the actual transfer case in their kind of their worst case scenario. So I'm just going to take a marker and write, write a little mark there so that when I'm moving these around, I know that no matter what, the actual um, heim joint here cannot come up and actually touch that mark. Otherwise, it'll, it would bind up against this case. All right, so I just took a uh, an actual uh, pry bar, and you know, because they're so easy to shift, and I took it through here, and I pressed up against the flange on the front of the drive shaft here, and was able to just like a shifter push that forward one click on both of these, and so now you see I've exposed some of the shaft, and that's why we marked this. I mean, obviously you can see from the kind of the rustiness where things were, but say this was a new shaft, you wouldn't be able to tell. So now I know this transfer case is in neutral. This spins like buttery easy. Same thing here, spins easy. And you'll notice they're not locked to each other. So that's what you wanna see. Now we're in neutral. So I'll post a picture um, basically that John sent me. And in that picture, you can see there's about an inch and a half from the edge, like where the seal for the actual shaft is to where the actual hole of the um, that you drill through the shift rail is. So if you look at what I got here, I got lined up at about about one and a half inches there. So that's kind of right about where my hole would be. And you can see um, in similar fashion, we're gonna be on, on the left side here of this line. Of course, we don't want the heim gen or anything to t touch our Sharpie mark here. So for right now, I'm gonna cut this rail off about right here at where the actual flag is. We'll just cut, cut right through the rail 
and uh, that'll actually take the entire flag off the end of this specific ship rail. Okay, so we got our um, first rail cut off. And so now you can see they're pretty close to right in line with each other. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna now use the room that we just gained and kind of go underneath here and try and slice right here with the death wheel and get the most of that flange off of that rail. Next thing I'm gonna do is mark out my hole, um, which is basically an inch and a half back from the face right here. Okay, so uh, now that I got my mark at inch and a half, just for sanity here, I'm gonna go and check and see that my hole would match right like that. See my hole, I'm gonna match right over top. And again, the heim joint's not gonna touch the Sharpie in any way. And I'm gonna do that on this other side as well. Gonna hold this thing up. There it would be, not touching the Sharpie, also good. All right, well it took probably, I don't know, 15 minutes, something like that. You have various drills, went small, then larger, then two size, and uh, went ahead and drilled through here, there and there. And so you can see kind of where we're at. Again, we still have that flat on the back of this um, this rail. So I think I think maybe that can stay there. We'll just try it out. And uh, basically now, we're just gonna bolt this up and get everything adjusted. Okay, so we got um, these just initially mounted. And so you can see we're a little bit tweaked. Uh, we don't have it quite adjusted right. Uh, I need to bring this one back a little bit, take some length out of our out of our joint, and then this one, uh, maybe we'll add some so that it straightens it up a little bit. But basically I'm trying to get these shifters to sit basically straight up because they're both in neutral right now. All right, so I got it uh, pretty darn close here. They're sitting, you know, straight up. You can see the the paneling in the, in the wall. We're basically right on. And so um, anyway, something we didn't do is we haven't tightened these bolts so now that we got everything kind of sitting basically right where we want to do we're going to go tighten these first make a final adjustment here and all i did was i just took the nut off the back you just pull this out swivel it put it right back in its hole and you can make really quick easy adjustments there and then we'll run our jam nut down to like lock all this in place okay so um everything's tight these are tight everything's tight and so we'll try it out. So here's our little shift pattern. And so, you know, it's in neutral right now. So the first thing uh, I'll pull the stick back would be rear high. That would be two wheel drive. There it is. So you see it's locked. Well, it's the trucks in neutral, but it has drag. So that's what we want. So we're cruising along and then um, we find a mud hole. So now we're gonna go Engage our four-wheel drive. That's pull our front back into high too. Right there. So now both shifters are back. I got front high and rear high. And then uh, we get really stuck. So we go back to neutral. There's neutral. There's neutral. And now we want to go into low gear. Rock crawling. <laughs> so, there, push forward, that's rear low, and front low. So you see they're both leaned forward. And so uh, that would be cruising along, and then back to neutral, and too high, pull back. So, I don't know, kind of a cool, cool, simple setup. Um, really uh, impressed with this, uh, this part. Obviously, we don't know how it's going to fit with the cab, but that'll happen at some point and we will uh, sawzall or death wheel our way to making it right, subject to adjustment. You know, you can bend these back and forth. But anyway, 
I uh, hope this helps you out with your Bronco coyote swap, and uh, thanks for watching.